Is alcohol vegan? Well, first of all, don't be so obtuse. Alcohol is quite a broad term now, isn't it? You see, fine wine differs greatly from something as base as liquor or, God forbid, beer. You must be more precise with your inquiries if you want to receive more accurate responses. Is alcohol vegan? Ain't no animals in there. Nope. I think you're good. You got a pretty mouth. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan and welcome to another vegan nugget. When you first go vegan, it's all about eliminating meat, dairy, and eggs. Then, as time goes on, you start to learn about other issues like honey, wool, sugar, horse riding, medication, and alcohol. Sadly, and incredibly frustratingly enough, our species seems to want to cram animals and their byproducts into everything we produce. There's got to be some reason for that. When some people go vegan, they completely overhaul their life and health and eliminate drinking entirely. But this is not the case for everyone, nor does it have to be. Vegans come in as many shapes and sizes as non-vegans. Some are straight edge, some are alcoholics in recovery, some enjoy drinking, some simply don't like it, and some abstain for health or religious reasons. So is alcohol vegan? Well, short answer, it depends. There are a number of animal or animal-derived ingredients used in the fining process of alcohol clarification and stabilization, and some used as ingredients to the beverages themselves. Fining agents aren't intended to remain in the final product, but there's no guarantee. The broader definition of veganism would encompass the use of these animal byproducts in any aspect of the alcohol's production, as making the resulting product non-vegan. This is similar to the process used to make sugar white by filtering it through bone char, only some of the elements used for alcohol are a little more direct in nature, as they're used as actual ingredients rather than purely to purify the product. For instance, many liqueurs contain dairy, and some drinks like Campari are made with cochineal extract or carmine, which is a red food coloration derived from the dried crushed bodies of pregnant female Dactylopius coccus. For more information on carmine and a load of other fun ingredients commonly found in food, check out this oldie but goodie video of mine. So what exactly is fining and what animal derived agents does it use? Fining is the process of clarifying wine or beer and finings are substances that are usually added at or near the completion of processing. Finings remove organic compounds such as sulfides, proteins, polyphenols, benzenoids, or copper ions for the purpose of improving beverage clarity or adjust the flavor and or aroma. In the fining process or as an ingredient, one or more of the following agents may be used. Albumin, which is derived from eggs or dried blood, casein, derived from milk, charcoal, often derived from animal bone, colorings like carmine, derived from insects, glycerol monosterate, an anti-foaming agent that is sometimes animal derived from the breakdown of fats, lactose and lactobacillus, derived from milk, gelatin, made from bone, skins, and tendons, pepsin, a heading agent sometimes derived from pork, sugar, which is often whitened using bone charcoal, honey, derived from bees, of course, Chitin, derived from the shells of crabs and lobsters, and my personal favorite absurdity, isinglass, derived from the swim bladders of fish. For those not familiar, a swim bladder, also known as a gas bladder, fish maw, or air bladder, is an internal gas-filled organ that contributes to the ability of a fish to control their buoyancy and thus stay at their current water depth without having to waste energy. Over the years, humans have utilized fish bladders for a wide array of uses, from an Asian delicacy, to a source of collagen for the food industry, to the production of ice and glass for alcohol fining, to the creation of a strong, water-resistant glue, all the way to early condoms. Yes, the first condoms were made from the swim bladders of fish and other entrails from the slaughterhouse. Nothing really sets the mood like stretching entrails over your naughty parts. So let's quickly look at the application of these agents to the basic forms of alcohol. First, we have beer. The Vegetarian Society states that 
Real ale undergoes a secondary fermentation while it is being stored in the cask. Cask conditioned ales need fining to clear the material such as yeast suspended within the liquid. This is typically done by adding isinglass, which is derived from the swim bladders of fish, to gather up the yeast and make it sink to the bottom of the cask. Bottled naturally conditioned beers will not always have been treated with isinglass. Keg beers and lagers are pasteurized and usually passed through chill filters, as are canned beers and some bottled beers. However, a considerable number of breweries still use isinglass to clear their pasteurized beers. Second, there's cider. Some brands of ciders are fined with the use of gelatin. Third, we have wine. Many of the previously listed animal-derived ingredients are used in the processing of wines to improve appearance of the finished product. The Vegetarian Society states that non-animal alternatives do exist in the form of bentonite, impure clay, kieselgur, sedimentary rock, kaolin, clay material, and silica gel. Also, methods such as centrifuging and filtering are becoming more popular. And lastly, there are spirits and liqueurs, most of which appear to be vegan friendly. However, it's always best to be sure. So how can you tell if any of this awesomeness is in your alcohol? Well, looking at the ingredients label isn't gonna cut it. Regulations for the labeling of alcoholic beverages vary widely by country. For example, the European Commission regulations for alcoholic beverages only requires a complete list of ingredients for alcoholic beverages with strength by volume of 1.2% or less, meaning that only low or non-alcoholic beers, wines, and ciders have to list all of their ingredients. You can find a list of labeling regulations by country along with further resources in the blog post for this video, which is linked in the video description below and in the iCard sidebar. Luckily, there are many vegan-friendly options out there and a helpful website that is constantly cataloging them all. It's called barnivore.com and is run by two vegans. You can search for your particular drink and even contribute with information you have about others. They do not, however, have information on what kind of glue is used for the bottle labels, as glue can be derived from connective tissue, bones, skin, or casein. So if you're concerned, opt for a can. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't include a note about alcohol outside of its potential animal content. While drinking can be an enjoyable social lubricant and can be an entertaining addition to the evening when enjoyed responsibly, for alcoholics and addicts it can be a completely life-destroying force. I have seen many people close to me have their lives fall down around them due to their drinking but I've also seen these very same people rise from that destruction through the help of treatment, a 12-step program, or other methods. I will include some information about this on the blog post for this video for anyone who may be struggling. Now, I personally do not drink. I've never found it appealing in the least, but drinking itself is not evil. If you are responsible and not harming yourself or others, including non-human animals, then more power to you. As I said earlier on, we vegans are just people. And as people, we have countless variations among us. And that is to be celebrated, not policed for uniformity. For those of you who do drink, you know not to get a DUI, but now you can be sure not to get a CUI. Cruelty under the influence. By going for the animal-free, vegan-approved beverages. I hope you enjoyed this tall drink of a nugget. I'd love to hear from you on this topic. Were you aware of the animals and alcohol? If you're vegan, did you change your habits around alcohol at all with your dietary change? If you're not vegan but thinking about it, is this a consideration you've made or is it way off your radar? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this shot of knowledge, give the video a big thumbs up and share it around to spread the education. To help keep Bite Size Vegan educating, please check out either of the support links in the video description below, and for perks and rewards for your support, just click the Nugget Army icon there or the link in the description for more info on joining up. You can also find it in the info card sidebar. Every little bit helps to keep this education machine going. If you're new here, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down there for more awesome vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And hey, check out some of the related videos while you're here to see what else might not be vegan. Now go live vegan, drink or don't responsibly and I'll see you soon. So this is how much I know about alcohol. I had to Google how to hold one of these. I still don't know if I'm doing it right. Oh.
how do people drink this? I don't get it. See, this actually smells okay. The beer, though. Mmm. No. No, why do I keep doing it?